This is for you. Six words from the commissioner. The cheers of 19,000. The triumph of a team. A group of young men from two continents and five countries. Guys who played for their junior squad, their college, or their army. Sharing magnificent joy. Joy born from a moment of adversity. 13 months before, a goal scored against them in the fifth period of a seventh game of a third round. Yet from the sloop shoulders of defeat, there came no retooling, no changes in style, only a greater resolve to make a difference next time. This is the story of next time, 1995. The title is team. Next time almost never came. Jacques Lemaire and his staff saw their plans for next time delayed until mid-January by a first-ever lockout. Stefan Richer's first goal of the Devil season did not signal some bold march to this title because in the 48-game mini-season, there were only hints of greatness. It took five games to get the first win in the home opener against Buffalo. Bill Guerin had both goals that night, one on a power play. Guerin just weaving his way in, shot, scores! That was another tender spot. It would be the first and only power play goal in the first 20 tries. It would be win some, lose some, get close to 500. But it was a team that couldn't give up many without risking defeat. It got better. On the final game of March at Philadelphia, the team that had been 22 games over 500 last time got above 500 for the first time. Nice strip of the puck by Stefan Richer moving in. Took it right away from Lindros. Here's the Richer. He scores! Stefan Richer! An impressive run was capped off on April 9th when Martin Brodeur's shutout of the Rangers ran the Devils' unbeaten string to seven. They headed to Florida with relief nine days later, having lost only one of 11 and having a shot at overtaking the Flyers for the division lead. But things went sour in Tampa Bay and they were shut out two nights later in Miami by the Florida Panthers. In the final seven games, they won but two. And in the season finale on May 3rd at Buffalo, Brodeur left in the first period in an eventual 5-4 loss. The odd horn rang to end the regular season. Fortunately, all of the stats were clicking back to zeros. The playoffs were beginning. Unfortunately for the Devils, they would begin on the road where they had little confidence finishing six games below 500. Good or bad, next time was now becoming this time. The playoffs start. The Bruins against some surprising guys many didn't recognize in just a moment. The title is team is brought to you by Starter. It's about team. The Bruins had home ice and had won the season series and were playing their last playoff at Old Boston Garden, a 1920s hall hosting a 1990s game. Stefan Richer, the Devils' prolific scorer, admitted a lack of excitement about these playoffs. I used to be so excited about playoffs. I used to be like, you know, I used to wait and dream to be in the playoff. And, uh, but right now, uh, my mind is not 100% there. Hopefully, you know, today to 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you know, I'll be ready and I'll try to focus a bit more. And, uh, because I don't think it would be fair for my teammate, you know, if I don't show up. That was Saturday. It was one nothing on his goal Sunday. Flamboyant, emotional, aggravating. That describes number 22, Claude Lemieux. He was assigned Bruins scoremeister Cam Neely, a shadow on a sniper. But in an amazing transformation, the shadow became the sniper. Lemieux easily shook off Neely, and by the end of the first period had scored twice. The Devils won the game 5-0. So the emotionally transparent Richer had the first goal and a winning goal in game one. In game two, ditto, a pickpocket shorthander. Again, it would be enough. Another 23-shot game by the Bruins. Another 23-save game by Martin Brodeur. 3-0. Two games, two shutouts. Now home. Home wasn't sweet. Marius Tcherkovsky broke a 1-1 tie midway in the second period. And it took nearly eight periods, but Cam Neely finally scored. His Bruins won the game 3-2. A 24-year-old kid from Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, Blaine Locker, 
In game four, he was special, and so was Brodeur. Through 60 regular minutes, the two faced 52 shots and made 52 saves. Then came overtime, 10.36 p.m. Locker sets it up. Randy McKay, Mike Peluso, and Bobby Holy, the helmeted Dobermans called the crash line, had put the Devils in position for a clinch. The smothering Devils defense and a third period goal by Valeri Zelopukin staked New Jersey to a 3-1 lead at Boston in game five. New Jersey was en route to victory. Brodeur was enormous at the bottom of the funneled Boston Garden net mount. They pulled the plug on the old place and thought of Pittsburgh. But a shrouded sidebar joined them. The Nashville move rumor started in midwinter, but in spring, everything blossoms, including that. Whether McMullen is using Nashville or not, Nashville's got time. I mean, there's $20 million waiting for whoever comes, and if McMullen wants, McMullen wants to turn it down, he can stay in New Jersey and think about the next guy who's gonna come and pick up that check. There were checks of another kind waiting in Pittsburgh. Some of those after this. The title is team is brought to you by Starter. It's about team. Like Boston, Pittsburgh had home ice and had won the season series. Although Riche got another first game, first goal, Ken Reggett, Pittsburgh's new mainstay, managed to keep Bobby Holik's attempt safe. It remained 1-0 into the second period, Devils. Reggett got help from all over. Lemieux was about to celebrate a goal, but defenseman Norm McIver's glove sweep of the puck kept the game tight in the second period. Void by plays like McIver's, Pittsburgh not only tied the game, but in the third period took a lead 2-1. Midway in the third, in an arena known for cheering a Mario Lemieux, New Jersey's Claude silenced the 16,000 with an impressive dash, 2-2. Yet in the final 80 seconds, just one mistake. Jim Dowd steps ahead. Dowd just wedged back off. Larry Murphy to play it there. Let it ahead for Robitaille, who's in. Backhander, score! A faulty line change and a Devils defeat, 3-2. No Devils night in Pittsburgh. For the first time, they trailed a series. A French-Canadian heritage and Montreal-Canadian background, Claude Lemieux hoped for better in game two. But a veteran Pittsburgh team loaded with previous cup winners went for a kill. The post got in the way of one shot, and on a two-on-the-goalie breakaway, Pittsburgh's own inaccuracy bit them a second time. Tied 1-1 in the third, Lemieux came through. Thrown ahead up the wing comes Claude Lemieux, and he's in. Lemieux scores! Oh, boy. Claude Lemieux, two to one in favor of the Devils, and Lemieux has done it again. The slim 2-1 lead held to the final minute, but then an odd bounce backfire. Up rolled along, John McClain can't get there first. It's Murphy out in front, Yager back hitter. Yager's goal with 75 seconds left made it 2-2. Two two. But it was at that moment that a captain took command of these New Jersey Devils, Scott Stevens. 35 to go in regulation. Stevens flying it ahead. Big drive blocked off by Reggett. Stevens again, cross and score! Scott Stevens on a backhander. Got his own rebound. 3-2 in favor of New Jersey. Stevens' first playoff goal with 29 seconds left set the stage for a thrilling finish. Brodeur's pad bested Joe Mullen's stick. And after all the grit and sweat and nastiness, Brodeur was mobbed, the Penguins were stifled, the series was tied. Back home, it was crashing hits and crash line goals in game three. Sandstrom moves it in. Glass is one that's taken by Holik. Holik for Peluso, third rebound. Three to one in the third period, Devils. It was Lemieux time. Well, here's Riche with Lemieux. Step on Riche to Lemieux score. The two former Canadians. The best players on other teams are going to be thinking goal and, and want to get the breakaway and want to get you know, the opportunity to beat a defenseman so they'll cheat a little. And, and we know that. And by thinking this way, we're thinking defense first. But when we do get the puck, we may have an extra minute, uh, I mean an extra second to react and to make a play because these guys are not back yet or they took a chance and they're caught out of position. Brodeur and his boys celebrated another win. 
5-1. Neil Broughton, only three months with the team. Defensive centerman, marvelous passer, and in game four, a goal scorer. His goal held, 1-0 in the third. Brodeur was doing the rest. John Chambers' team leads 2-1 in the series, 1-0 in the game. He's stripped to the puck by Yager, in with Francis. Yager with a shot, oh, nailed by Brodeur! Finally, the continual probing by the Penguins to find the back of the net worked. Venerable Ron Francis tied the game. As in game four against Boston, it would need overtime. And in this one, another new hero. McClain moving around behind the net. Has Ralston there, swung it across, score! It's over! The old face in the New Jersey had given his team a clinch chance in Pittsburgh. Nothing seemed right from the start. The Penguins were overwhelming in the first period. And for the first time in their 10th playoff game, the Devils didn't score first. Pittsburgh took 15 shots on Brodeur in that period. The Devils mustered six, but Bobby Holiks tied the game. A weird moment. Scott Stevens swiped Yaramir Yager's stick, hoping to have it measured at his team's bench. Linesman Pat DePuzo swiped it back. Late in the second period of the game, Claude Lemieux again delivered a key shot. He got all of this one, ragged only part of it, 2-1. Lemieux had the final goal of the day and the final goal of the series. A return for the Devils to the third round. As in the second, the next opponent was going to be even stronger. New Jersey to Philly. The team went south, its game didn't. Devils Flyers next. Like the Bruins and Penguins, Eric Lindros and his Flyers had home ice and had won the season series. Cam Neely and Yarmir Yager had been stifled by the Devils, but Lindros was harder to corral. This was the meanest, hardest hitting hockey yet. Character had gotten the Devils this far. On his game, but out of character was Brodeur. Gilbert Dion was taken to task, but Brodeur quickly refocused. And Craig McTavish was one of the guys who had to pay for it. Late in the first period, an American and two Russians combined for the first goal. Bill Guerin from Sergei Brelin and Valery Zelopukin. In the second, up to nothing, Randy McKay provided the force, Flyers goalie Ron Hextall the direction, 3-0. Then a power forwards masterpiece by Guerin. New Jersey had outshot, outplayed, and outscored the best team in their division once. What about twice? The Giant had hit, but hadn't scored. Lindros got game two, goal one. Trailing 2-1 late in the first period, Claude Lemieux flipped, and John McClain deflected. Another late first period tying goal. But who would wind up scoring next? Early second period, 12-year veteran defenseman Bruce Driver broke up a two-on-one. The Devils went from defense to offense. Broughton was sprung for a power play pass from Sean Chambers. Devils, 3-2. Then the Flyers wiped out. Four straight minor penalties, including one on this elbow by Lindros that provided the Devils with the last lap, 5-2. Two opening road victories. Jacques' guys were home, up to nothing, no lineup changes. And when Lemieux blistered home a slap shot 92 seconds in, it seemed there would be no change in the outcome. But, Devils up 2-1, just over six minutes left. And a bouncing puck off Rod Brindamore's stick gave the Flyers life and overtime. Philly's Legion of Doom tapped and tapped and blasted. Lindros won it. It was a series again. The winds were shifting. With Brindamore's shorthanded marker in game four, the momentum had blown back to Philadelphia, and so had the series for game five. The Devils had to deal with a hotter Ron Hextall. Would this be the end of that dream born of adversity? Not without a battle, a tremendous battle, a mean war with the man wearing the sea emerging from combat. From this, everyone played bigger. Bobby Carpenter at 199 gave up 30 pounds but made the hit. In the third period, the Flyers' Kevin Deneen made the score the same as the series, 2-2. Tension and close calls, a breakaway for Stefan Riche, but the crossbar. 45 seconds from still another overtime, the puck magnetically came to Lemieux. He fired a shot that brought cheers to one end of New Jersey and to one bench, and tears to the other end of New Jersey and the other bench. The Devils were coming home, ahead.
the last time they had lost round three game six. Bad omen. Little used Jim Montgomery put them behind. Good omen. Six minutes later, midway in the first period, it was Riche. It was tied. Again in the playoffs, a significant goal would come late in the first period. This time, Brian Ralston got it. The Devils led, and the lead would stick. This was a night of tremendous thrills. The team that showed little hope of going two rounds was going four. The Devils ballooned their lead. Crash line, 3-1. From Secaucus, or Paramus, or Saddle River, or from Trenton, fans thrilled to the attention that was going to be paid to the team. It was left to Lemieux to seal the Flyers' season and lengthen his team's own. No surrender in round three, game six this time. The adversity of the old year was blasted into small change by the success of this one. Every game, every experience would now be something new. It was another set of handshakes, and it was a trophy called the Prince of Wales. But veteran to rookie, it was the new thrill of playing for the Stanley Cup. I'm just glad that I'm able to be a part of it. You know, I thought I was going to be out for the season and possibly half of next year. And it's just a great feeling. The guys really were focused uh, throughout the playoffs and especially tonight. What I was really impressed with is the veterans were been there through the whole playoffs, but I think the young guys stepped it up. I mean, Rolston and Guerin and Dowd played fantastic. And I thought Scott Niedermeyer was great the last two nights. And that's the reason we're going where we are because the veterans have been solid throughout, but the young guys stepped up tonight and did a great job. I've only played uh, four playoff games and, uh, you know, obviously I'm fresh and, you know, just happy to go in there and contribute. And, and uh, Jim Dowd hasn't, put, you know, he played the uh, last game, but uh, he was out for a while too. So, you know, uh, it's good, you know, when we can jump in and, and do the job. And, uh, you know, it's great to see, the com you know, that the coaches have confidence in you to uh, throw you in there. The field was down to two. Devils Detroit for the goods. Next. The title is Team is brought to you by Starter. It's about team. The kid of 23 was now in the deepest of fish bowls. And the nine-year Detroit Red Wings captain, Steve Iserman, made him hear a clank in the first period, crossbar. 180 feet away, 32-year-old Mike Vernon was showing how he'd won an earlier title. Game one of the finals was shaping up as a goaltending duel. Wheeling around behind the net, Keith Primo found Dino Cicerelli. A butt-in save made by Brodeur. As the game wore on, two teams who hadn't played for 16 months were getting acquainted. Almost halfway through the game, a Devils power play and a Riche goal. The first one, again. As Riche's blast trickled through Vernon, the nearly 20,000 at Joe Louis Arena grew silent. Breaks and penalty calls often even out over a series. A man who had coached six Stanley Cup championships before, Scotty Bowman, knew that. Three minutes later, a Detroit power play, and it was awakened when Dino Cicerelli tied the game. Going into the third, the electricity was back at Joe Louis Arena. But it was early in the third that John McClain and Claude Lemieux found themselves on the ice together, and the omnipresent Lemieux scored again. This was the visage that would haunt the Red Wings because it was the last goal of game one. This was jumping into the play at the right time. This was smothering Devils hockey. All hands contributing, controlling play. This was team. They had gone on the road at the start of every series. They had won almost every road game. They took this one two to one. Two tentative teams in game one became two temperamental teams in game two. And there was no pair so mean, so belligerent as Stevens and Cicerelli. Was there a crack in Detroit's will? Bill Guerin tested it. So did Ken Danico. In the second period, the first goal came. Detroit got it. Slava Kozlov flipped it. The crowd savored it. But only 83 seconds later, John McClain, who had scored so many of the team's goals over the years, got the one that tied. So it was 1-1 in the game. But the question was, would the McClain goal spur the Devils on to make it something other than 1-1 in the series? Scott Stevens emphatically said, not yet. A contact sport included a devastating high-speed collision hit on Slava Kozlov. Dazed, Kozlov was helped to the bench. 
The teams both rested at that point. If there was to be hitting, the Devils captain said that his team would do it. He looked to the Detroit bench and yelled at the Detroiters, you're next. As it turned out in scoring, Sergei Fedorov was next. A rare opening. Detroit got a third period lead. Elation in Detroit. This was the proud President's Trophy team again. In any series of contests, there comes a point when one individual seizes the moment, grabs the game by the throat, and shakes it. Scott Niedermeyer, third period. Tie game at 9.47. Niedermeyer's speed and presence altered the course of the game and the series. Skills honed in distant British Columbia, scouted out by a team in the Eastern United States, and it paid off. From then on, Detroit was counterpunching. Late in the game, a shot hit Paul Coffey. It hurt him, but play continued. The puck went back to the blue line. Another shot rang through on Vernon, and then a deliciously huge rebound for Jim Dowd, a goal, and nothing but head-banging regret. And at the Devil's bench, another new hero. Riche emptied the cash drawer of the day's sale. Twice the Red Wings had played at home. Prior to this series, no losses. Now, two losses. The shock was setting in. And for the Devils, an awareness was setting in. A team. A title? Oh, it's, you know, it's great. When it happened, it was great. And after the game, it was great. But now, all of a sudden, you know, we got a game tomorrow. You know, we just got to focus on tomorrow's game. I mean, it feels great. It's an unbelievable feeling. You can't describe it. You know, you have to be there to get the full effect. But it's just, it's over and done with now. We get, you know, we only won two games. We got to win four. On a patch of New Jersey asphalt, confidence and chanting. Give me that! 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 Give me and uh, I've been here since 83, and it's the best. It's the best. We love New Jersey. We love the Devils, and uh, they're staying. They ain't going nowhere. You got to feel it here. It's a gut feeling right in your heart. The Devils, last year, they should have won the whole thing. They didn't. Okay, next year, here we are again. We're in the Stanley Cup, and we're winning it all. We're going four straight, and we're not going to be stopped. We're going to win the whole thing, and that's it. On New Jersey ice, confidence and teamwork as game three began. Detroit penalty. The Devils driver. The Devils led. 19,040 voices and hearts continued their dreams. And to ensure it was an important game for New Jersey, Claude Lemieux scored again. This was starting to look easy, 2-0. But how easy could it be? Detroit was the team that won the President's Trophy, and this wasn't even close. Second period, Neil Broughton often passed, not this time, 3-0. The Red Wings were being overwhelmed. And still in the second, some more spice was about to be added. A goal by the crash line. A goal that would come to Randy McKay. Although he would survive the celebration with Mike Peluso, Detroit's Mike Vernon, the goaltender, would not. The coach of the team, Scotty Bowman, made a change. He later revealed he also blasted his players. Martin Brodeur would look back on it as a tidy, comfortable night at the office. The team was a win away from having names etched on silver. The Red Wings were one loss away from an improbable, unthinkable sweep. I think our uh, our focus has been there, you know, equally as strong every night. Um, we've been sticking to our game plan and our system uh, throughout the whole playoffs, and it's uh, it's really starting to pay off. Game four, the longest night. Next. Look what we got here. We got a little octopi. Here we go. Outside before game four, a different parking we lot chant. We want the cup! 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 Inside, it took just 68 seconds for the red light to flicker. Neil Broughton lit it. The only question was, would it count? The Red Wings protested. The replay machines whirred. And when it was all done, survey said, one nothing, New Jersey. 
Though this goal put Detroit behind, the Red Wings had gone to a style change for this fourth game, and it was working. Sergei Fedorov tied the game. And 11 minutes later, the Devils continued to be tense, even on a power play. Paul Coffey scored a shorthanded goal, 2-1 Detroit. Still time left in the first. A native of Detroit ready to salvo for Motown, Sean Chambers, 2-2 after one. Typical of Devils playoff hockey, tying a dramatic game late in the first. The Red Wings had played well in the first period. They just weren't ahead. Chambers' goal had evened it up. Second period, it was Broughton again. At the side of the net, he worked and worked and worked and got it. A lead for New Jersey. Net cam captured the frustration of Vernon's helpless battle with the Devils centerman. One period left. It became 4-2 in the third. One more goal would lock it up. It was Chambers. And somewhere in the arena, cold hands were icing champagne. White gloves were readying the Stanley Cup. Then came the end and the beginning. The championship to New Jersey. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. The team of players melted into itself, appropriately at the net they had so valiantly protected for 20 games. The defensive presence and the defensive future. Stevens, Niedermeyer. From Minnesota, Montreal, and the Czech Republic, crashing success. On their bulletin board, a newspaper clipping had been tacked up and underlined. We have the heart of a champion. You cannot measure it. You can only feel it. Akeem Olajuwon, NBA champion, Houston Rockets. Affirmed by Ken Danico and Claude Lemieux. Stanley Cup champion, New Jersey Devils of 1995. Next time for the Devils had come, and it was not going to leave quickly. This time, it was another set of guys who had to think about next time. Bowman and Lemaire, two men who had shared five of these. Only one could have this one. It was Jacques. Long ago, at age six, there was a dream, threatened by a blown knee at 27. Rehab, and now the dream of youth realized at 30. Fred Shiro had said, these men are children playing a children's game. These were grown men spending their heart for a cause, overcome with grown-up tears. McLean and Slava Fetisov, teammates before April, opponents after. And from a group that was starless, but so bright collectively, one had to be voted the best. One was. The Conn Smythe Trophy is awarded to the most valuable player in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It goes to Claude Lemieux. How many times had he engaged the opponents in words and bumps and hurts, all for just an edge? The number of times didn't matter. The result of those times did. And this added prize took a controlled player beyond his emotional limits. Many admitted they hadn't slept the night before. But sleep was overrated. The cup was not. Gloved hands brought it out. Ungloved ones were about to claim it. The Devil's amazing playoff run has taken the term teamwork to a new level. Congratulations to the Devils, John McMullen, Lou Lavarello, Jacques Lemaire, and the players. Scott Stevens, this is for you. Well, I just wish all the guys could have been there because they all deserve it. I mean, I'm a small part of this team. This is a team effort. Every night with someone different contributing and, and making it possible. I'm just so proud of all the guys in this team, and I'm honored to be on such a great hockey team. The Devils' first playoff berth had come seven years ago on a goal by John McClain. Now he had contributed to their first title. It's an incredible feeling. I mean, just to, uh, you know, we were close last year, and then this year we just got on such a roll, and we, we played so good as a team together, and uh, we worked hard for this, and we deserved it, and we went out and got it. Bruce Driver, 
His first family was there to watch the victory by his second. It's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, John McClain, Ken Danik, and myself have been through an awful lot of tough times, and uh, it's it's even sweeter to win it at home. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, our wives have been through so much with us as well. This girl here, she's been through thick and thin. She's been here right from the start, and I mean, you can see she's pretty emotional here as well right now. But we wanted to win in front of our home fans, and we wanted to win in front of our wives and kids. Mike Peluso, whose hands were often scabbed and hurting. He kissed the cup and then handed it over to Bobby Carpenter, whose knee flattened him on a hospital bed after a doctor told him he was through three years before. And then it was handed over to Lemieux, who had been this route before, but it had been nearly a decade. So he was going to make memories as fast as he could. I waited nine years to, uh, to be back in this, uh, in this position and, uh, and to win it the way we did it and, and with the team that we had and, and here in New Jersey is just uh, very special. Not every devil was there at the start of the year. Neil Broughton arrived in February. Well, I don't know, when I come here, I just wanted to contribute, help the team, and uh, Jock Lemaire gave me a chance to do that and support of the players. Uh, it's just an unbelievable feeling to be part of a team that wins the Stanley Cup. Martin Brodeur, a goalie's son carrying on the noble trade, a photographer's son with pictures and numbers that would be the future yardstick of excellence, an average of 1.67, a save percentage of 927. His first Stanley Cup. Bill Guerin, Wilbraham, Massachusetts, celebrating a championship with his parents, his girlfriend, and a lot of pride. Oh, so proud, so proud and so happy for him. He had really worked hard for this, and he's so young, and he's just so great. We're so proud of all of them, actually, all of them. The only New Jersey native to play for New Jersey. Jim Dow and a large family band from the town of Brick. I just feel great. We're all the boys on the team in the New Jersey Devils. They finally brought the cup and we'll get a little respect now. Respect also for another of the 12-year Devils. Restaurateur, but better known as a defenseman, Ken Danico. I wouldn't have missed it for the world and I'm just so proud of these guys. Uh, you know, there's so much character in this room. I mean, it's amazing just to win four straight, but uh, it was the 24 guys that contributed. And then there was the head of the 24 guys, Lemaire. His ninth Stanley Cup, and the first one that he's ever gotten as a coach. I have to give credit to the, the, uh, all the players on this team for what they did, what they achieved. This was great. It was assistant coach Larry Robinson's seventh Stanley Cup, his first in a business suit. And then the big urn went to goalie coach Jacques Caron, the coaching link to Brodeur. Brodeur, the achiever who inspired believers. Then back to center ice for the players to be all in a glorious pile with their silver prize. No one covering up the other because this title was team. Gentlemen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dave's um, painted his face. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Well, you got to support your team, huh? You couldn't get it out of your zone all night. We were aggressive. We didn't let you penetrate. Yeah, all right, that's enough out of you. This was a team which earlier had gotten occasional recognition from several people, including the cast of Seinfeld. But in the days following the initial celebration, the players and their much-traveled Stanley Cup were constantly on display from early morning until late at night. Thank you very much. Thank you, my old man. Are you guys going to Tennessee? I don't know. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Nice job. There was one more official festival of love for the title team. That was outside the very place where the silver trophy had first been presented. Thousands of fans gathered in the early evening hours of the Wednesday night after the Saturday clinching to lustily salute the men and their families who were in turn going to return that salute to them. A motorcade of convertibles snaked its way slowly yet joyfully around the ice house. Fans were at arm's length from their heroes, the guys in the jerseys and jeans. Claude was there with Tom, the Smythe Trophy. The smile of Martin Brodeur could be seen clearly this time, not through a wire mask. 
If there was a character with presence in any setting, it had to be Mike Peluso. Strangely, the cup was tardy for the celebration, but in a technological age, there are ways. And as in their playoff run, you do what it takes, and you surprise some people. The Bill Guerin dance team celebrated, and then old Stan was up high again. Governor Christine Todd Whitman got something to take away the evening chill and shared the same philosophy as one of her New Jersey Devils constituents, Chris Terreri. Also shared thundering appreciation for a coach. I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to thank all of you for your support all year and especially in the playoffs. More cheers. Then it was time to hear from the players. I tell you what, when a young Ken Danico came into the league here, Johnny McLean and myself, you guys were behind us then, and we know you're behind us now. You guys are the best. And I'll tell you, there's been an awful lot of talk about the three of us how long we've been together here and been through some tough times. But, there's a few other guys here, I'll tell you, that have been waiting an awful long time for this as well. Neil Broughton. U.S. Olympian from 1980. We all remember those times. Scotty Stevens as well. a whole host of guys up here that have waited for this dream, a dream come true. We've dedicated our whole lives to playing hockey and trying to get the ultimate goal, and we finally got it here in New Jersey. And this Stanley Cup is as much for the players as it is for you fans, too. You guys have waited a long time for this, everybody in this team. There's more guts and character on this club than I've ever seen in my life. I'm losing my voice, but I've enjoyed this more than you can ever imagine. And you people that have been through it, the thick and thin with us over the years, and the ones that have started following us now, continue to follow us. I never could have imagined it being this good, a million times better, and you people should enjoy it as much as us. You deserve it. We got a championship for New Jersey, state of New Jersey, first team, mid New Jersey. You gotta love it, yeah! We knew you were right behind us all the time, and we won this cup for you also. And I just want to say, I can't wait to see you people here next year when... When we repeat winning the Stanley Cup once again. Thank you. The title is Team has been brought to you by Starter. It's about team.